we're going to look at what happens when I have a multiple mass situation. So I have a disc sitting here mounted on the board. I have a, another mass hanging off the edge and I'm going to release this. It's free to pivot on that mount and this block is going to accelerate down. Now because there is some amount of inertia up in this disc, this is not going to be in free fall. There's going to be some tension. And so we should get an acceleration less than 9.8. And that's what we want to figure out. What is the acceleration? So how we set up these problems is similar to how we set up multiple mass problems before. We need to draw the direction of acceleration. Okay, why? That's going to be my positive direction. What forces are acting on my block? Well, it has a mass of 2m, so I have 2mg acting down. I also have tension acting up. So at this point, we haven't really done anything terribly different from when we did this in forces. Down is my positive direction, so I have the sum of the forces is going to equal my mass, which is 2m times a. And so down is 2mg minus tension equals 2ma. But I have two unknowns. I'm not able to solve for a in terms of the mass. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to get a second equation. Now our second object up here is rotating. And so we need to identify the direction of its angular acceleration and make that positive. So in this case, um, counterclockwise is my positive direction. So that means any torques counterclockwise will be positive. Again, draw my free body diagram. So I have tension here. I have 3mg here. And I also have some sort of supporting normal force. But as you can see, the normal force and the 3mg are not going to produce any torque because they're at the axis of rotation. My tension is producing positive torque. And so I'm able to say that the sum of the torques equals I alpha. I have tension times radius is equal to I. I said this was a disk, so our moment of inertia is going to be 1 half mr squared. We're going to look that up on our um, sheet to know what the moment of inertia for a disk is. Alpha. So this equation has A, this equation has alpha. There is a relationship between the linear and rotational quantities here. Because they're connected at this point, what I can say is the tangential acceleration, so in other words, the acceleration of this point tangent to the circle is equal to alpha times the distance from the axis rotation to that point, r. And so the tangential acceleration is the acceleration of the string and thus this block. So there is my relationship. So what I end up with over here is I end up with t times r equals 1 half m r squared. And instead of alpha, I'm going to put a divided by r. And what's cool here is all of those r's cancel. Okay. Oops, missed one thing. This is 3m, yeah? 3m. There we go. All right, now I can make my substitution for tension. So I have 2mg minus... My 1 half times 3ma equals 2ma. And what you see here is all of my m's cancel, and I can start to solve for a. So I'm going to get my a's on the same side. So I have 2g equals 2a plus 3 halves a. And from here, we can combine our a's. So I have 2 plus 3 halves times a. 2g on this side, and solve for a. And what we get for a is we end up with 4 sevenths g. So a fraction of the acceleration of gravity. And if you want to plug that into 9.8, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to leave it as this.